I'm your host, Daniel P. Geddes, and we are here with the infamous Justin Miller. JM, how are you doing today? I'm good, brother. Thanks for having me on your podcast. I really appreciate it. No, I thank you so much for being here. I've been a fan for a long time, and I'm when I started doing this project, I'm like, Justin's one of the guys that I got to get on, and uh, we're going to have a great time and talk some magic and talent, and uh, let's do it. That's awesome. How did you, real quick, how did you, uh, how did you become familiar with my work? Like how long ago? Ooh, back when Illusionist started to go online. Okay. Uh, so I, I bought some downloads of yours, which I'm still working on. I got Vibration. And mm -hmm. uh, so I'm still working on that. How I got to maneuver it all around, but I love that trick. That's a great trick. Yeah, Vibration is really cool. Uh, the idea came to me because of a switch, uh, the uh, the vibration switch was the original uh, concept for it, uh, being able to switch a car without doing a top pin. Okay. And that, that was the whole point of it. Um, because when, I, I don't I don't mind top changes. I mean, they're fun, they're fine. But I had this great idea to go from this kind of, so they, they'd see the card type of thing, then you call the card, but you'd call it behind. So now it's sticking out in jog right right so now now you can you can have uh, have a card selected say is that the card they say no you're sure that wasn't the eight of clubs okay i tell you what let's try something blow on it, and of course it changes into the right card yeah that's great and that's that's kind of where the whole thing came from yeah that's <laughs> awesome uh so what we're gonna do guys this is gonna start off a little different series in my podcast we're gonna uh I, you know, it's a talent podcast and I felt that we should uh, show off some talent. So what we're mm. going to do is we're going to have JM do a little something for us. I'm going to show you what I've been working on. So I'm going to go first and mm. then uh, and then I'll let you do your routine. So this is and it's this is going to be a hard angle to do it at. So because of the phone, let's see if I can angle it down a little more. All right. So two of hearts. A little bit of a there you go queen of spades very cool so we're working on that very cool well i'm actually going to use your deck we're, we'll try something this doesn't always work but we'll actually use your deck for this so shuffle your cards up oh mm. all right okay let me make sure i'm not going to use anything right here i'm not going to use a deck of cards or anything you're going to do everything there okay cool um, and here, let's actually do this then. I'm going to move you over to my mat. Cool. And this way you can you can see me do this. Perfect. It looks right. how, how much do you want me to mix it? As much as you want. You can stop whenever you want. All right. We'll do one more and then I'm good. Okay. Perfect. Put the deck down in front of you. Face down. Got it. I want you to name two cards out loud. So not the don't worry about the suits, all right? The, the, just the value. So you can name a two and a ten. You can name a king and a four. You can whatever you want to name. Now again, this might not work. This might not work. But if it works, okay. it's really cool. Um, uh, just the value, just the value, not the suit. Yep. Name any ones you want. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with a six and a jack a six and a jack believe it or not if this worked even though you shuffled whenever you wanted and you stopped whenever you wanted the six and the jack is next to each other right now okay so spread the deck towards the, the camera all right and go very very oh, jack already wait wait hold on this is a, no 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 towards me towards me towards me oh, not towards, towards you. you like that now, there's a jack already. Go from the bottom to the go from the bottom. Okay, let's see how we do. Oh, that's so close. Wait, stop, stop. Look how close that is, though. It's a five. It's one off. Pretty amazing. <laughs> All the is pretty amazing. Keep going. All right. Slow. Slow. One every card. Yep. Keep going. We have another jack. Let's see what's next to it. What's next to that jack? A four. Even wow, that's really crazy. Oh, Even off. A six, ooh, ooh, next to a four, okay, okay. Come on, 
kind of hard spreading this way. You're doing wonderful. What's that? Is that? No, that's no, no. Wow, that's even wait, stop. That's crazy. A jack and a nine, which is an upside down six. That's interesting. That's <laughs> crazy. Okay. Were you thinking of nine before two, or did you have did you have that in your head or no? No, I was pretty uh, determined on what I wanted. Okay. okay, keep going. So we got one more shot, right? I think we've done three jacks. You've had like really three big close, like next yeah, to each other. Yeah, super really close. Weird. It was six and a ten. That's not, that's kind of weird. Okay. One, one off, off by one. Another one off, yeah. It's a lot of one offs. Getting down to it. I don't think we got it this time. Keep going. I don't think we got it though. We got, but we got really close. Like a jack and a seven. That's one off again. That's one off. We were one off every time. You're one off, but you were one off four times. That's really interesting. Maybe, maybe it's these, these are the cards I was talking about. And you could have named this thing, right? Right. Let's see if we get a hit here. There's a six, right? There's a six and a six by each other. Six and next to a nine. Nine. There's a jack and a jack. Oh, There's that's interesting. <laughs> Two sixes and two jacks. Wait a minute. So wait, when you said jack and six, they actually went and found the mates of each one. Okay, that's weird, dude. That's, yeah, that's bizarre. Two sixes and two jacks right next to each other. Okay, keep going. Let's see what else we find. That's nutty, bro. That's nutty. There's a six and an ace. Yeah. There's a jack and a two, and another jack and an ace. That's really weird. Okay, let's do this one more time. Think, All of, right. think of any two other cards. Any other two? Shuffle while you're thinking of it, though. Let's try that. Maybe that'll All change. Right. Switch it up. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go a nine and a three. Nine. Cut the deck. Cut the deck. Cut the deck? Yeah. Complete the cut. All right, let's see what you did. Let's check it out. Why don't we go from top to bottom or bottom to top? Whatever you want to go. An ace and a three, that's close. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> a nine. Wait, hold on. A nine and a what? Three, you said? Yeah. Look at that. Ace one plus two. That's three. That's interesting. All right. I like it. So that's two of those. That's really weird. That's really weird. Going. See, even if it doesn't work, you're it's really interesting because you're 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 getting like certain really weird combinations. There's a three. Yeah. What's this one? A four. four yeah, yeah, yeah. And a six. That would be ten. That's close. It's really nothing there, yeah. <laughs> We're stretching here. Yeah, that's that's totally stretching. But the other ones weren't. What's that? Ten. The other ones weren't stretching. That was really interesting. So you said a nine and a three, right? Right. Two nines next to each other. That would have been cool if that was a three. There's a three. Oh, no, that's an ace. Yeah. Well, I think what we can conclude from this is you you had like a lot of whoa, whoa, wait, wait, what was it was that at the bottom? Look at the towards the bottom, towards the bottom, towards the bottom. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop. Stop. That's an what? interesting one. We're not even gonna stretch here. Look, six plus three is what? Nine. So the and the six is next to the three, which is that's the upside down nine again, which is what you had last time with the jack. Oh uh, yeah. That's true. So you, cool. what we think is you just came up with a lot of like one-offs. That's really interesting. Really yeah. interesting. 
Oh, very cool. Very cool. All right. So let's see uh, what's the psychological doing behind that. Routine? It's not psychology. It's Just synchronicities, coincidences? It's it's a random thing. Uh, the gentleman, um, years and years and years ago, probably in the early, I think, uh, 1920s, 1930s, came up with this idea. Uh, and Vernon kind of came up with another idea based on that, that he called the trick that cannot be explained. And so this is the, the infancy of the trick that cannot be explained. This is kind of where it came from. Okay. And the, it's the idea of just being able to have a lot of card knowledge behind you. But this one's a little different. This one, this one has to do with um, randomness, complete randomness. Okay. And so you can't, you can't, it doesn't work every single time. But when it right. works, it's a hit. It's you're done. But well, if it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, then you you look for ways out of it, and you can kind of look for things. It's almost like a cold thing for a, a, a card trick. That's what I'd say. It'd be more of a more of an exercise to uh, to do the cold reading and to make you more on top of it. It's a uh, great. I use this all the time just to practice just cold reading, just with that one little little thing. Yeah. So here's a question. How many out of 10 times, how many times would you say you would get a pair that matched? Uh, well, I mean, doing the trick right back to each other or how many times I've actually done the trick? Uh, let's just say you do it 10 times to 10 people. How many times would you get it to come out? It, well, that's the thing. You you don't know. Okay. <laughs> All right. When to work. Never. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Well, we'll uh, post that. You want to show us one other quick thing? Nope. Not at all. Good. All right. Okay. Uh, so, um, JM, you're a magician. Tell mm -hmm. me about who you are and when you discovered your talent. Uh, well, I like well, long walks on the beach. No. Um, <laughs> I uh, I actually do like long walks on the beach. Beaches are really awesome. Um, I was five years old. My dad showed me a card trick. It was the four robbers, you know, the four jacks and the, the deck of cards is the house and the four robbers go into different parts of the house. And then the third one stays on top and it's, it's a, or the fourth one stays on top for a lookout, you know, hey guys, get up here. The cops are here. And then one, two, three, four. I remember seeing I was five years old and I remember very vividly um, at that very moment that I knew that everybody in the world had to experience what I was experiencing. I remember saying that as a five-year-old kid, it's a, it was one of my very first thoughts that kind of brought me online into this world of whatever this was inside that I was feeling because of watching my dad do this amazing thing. I just saw this magic, this real magic. It, it wasn't a card trick to me. It was magic. It was the most amazing freaking thing I'd ever seen in my life. Of course, I was only five. So I didn't see a lot. Um, <laughs> And uh, and I remember, you know, saying, you know, that everybody in the world needs to experience this. And my life has been about teasing that 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 thought out. My whole life's just been teasing that thought out of how I can get other people to experience what I experienced when I was five years old. So when I create magic, when I perform magic, when I talk about magic, I talk about it as if I'm that five year old kid, and I have that very clear, distinct vision of what the trick should look like or what it should feel like more than anything. Nice. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I asked my guests, what are, what is JM's definition of talent? Hmm. It's a great question. I've never been asked that before. Um, I think I, I, as I've gotten older, I I've, I've realized that I, I've been wrong about a lot of things. <laughs> um, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, when you first have a thought about something or you think about a subject, depending on your experience and depending on how old you are, depending on where you come from, your answer is going to vary, you know. But as you get old, you start to have more of a universal understanding of what that really means, whatever that subject was or whatever that context was. And, you know, I used to think talent was just, it's something anybody could do. So they have a certain thing and they could do that. That's their talent. Okay. Uh, I don't believe that anymore. I don't believe that anymore. I don't think everybody has a talent. I don't think everybody can create things. I don't think that everybody, I, I'm not a plumber for a reason because right. I'm really, 
at it. I don't know how to do it. And I don't want to learn how to do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm urgent because I didn't go to school for that. Um, so to me, a talent, first of all, I think there's two voices you have to listen to when trying to figure out what your talent is, if we want to call it that word. Um, some people call it a gift, you know, those kind of things, but implying a gift means that it came from something or someone. And I'm an anti-theist. I don't believe that. Um, I think it's, it's a lot of hard work to have, yeah. to be able to do something like this or any kind of whatever you do, whatever art you're in or whatever vocation you're in. It's a lot of hard work to yeah. get to them and to, and to be that good, you know? So somebody can be talented but be talentless because they don't really know what they're doing with it they don't they're not good right. at it and just so you in a youtube video of some guy or some kid purchasing a magic trick and then exposing it um and you'll see exactly how good they are they're horrible they're horrible teachers they're horrible whatever and so you gotta listen to two voices going back to this you have to listen to two voices the first voice is inside you yeah. there's something that you connect to that thing, whatever that thing is, we'll use magic as an example. So you connect to it somehow. I connected to magic somehow. I didn't purposely try to. I, I, I was just shown a, 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 a magic trick by my dad and that was it. That was it. That, it changed my life. It changed my entire life because my dad. And the second voice is your outside influence, meaning your parents, meaning your brothers and sisters, meaning your, your peers, or if you go to school or whatever, right. when someone looks at you and goes, you're really good at that. Wow. You're good at that. Wow. You should do something with that. Wow. Those voices are there for a reason to guide us. And yeah. we need to listen to those voices. I think it's really important. So in order to find your talent, I think you have to have, you have to listen to yourself, the inner self and find out what it is that you like to do or what it is that you want to do. And then listen to the people around you. And get real honest feedback. Don't just get people blowing, you know, stuff up your ass and like, you know, whatever. Because, you know, right. you'll, see, you'll see a lot of that happen. Uh, a lot of these Instagrammers now are doing those those kind of things. You just look at me like, why? You're not good. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Good. Um, and people told them they are. And, uh, right. and then they get likes. And now the problem is they get likes, shares, and subscribes, and viewers, and followers. So they think that number is their success. Yeah. And that right. number is not their success. That's not success. Do not count your numbers. Do not count your likes. Do not count your followers. Don't do that. It's a bad right. idea. It's a bad idea. If you have it, if you have it, you have it. And people will follow you because of that. Correct. Put out good content. Put out good magic. Put out good teaching. Put out whatever you do. Whatever your art is. Just fucking focus on that. I, I'm, that's, for, that's the only effort I'm going to say. But, but I'm very passionate about this. Focus on that. Don't focus on getting your followers. Don't focus on any of that stuff. That will come later. Yeah. And I think the problem with the internet is that <clears throat> I, I heard uh, I heard Kevin Hart talk about this with Joe Rogan uh, yesterday, and it really hit me. The problem with the internet is that people are now missing steps to get to success. Yeah. They're going straight from one to three hundred, the three hundredth step. They're missing all that in between. And they're going to be bad at what they do if they continue to do that. Correct. I, I would agree with that. Well, and 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 I'm totally opposite. I, I mean, if I don't feel like my routine or effect that I'm doing is up to scratch and I don't feel good about it, I'm not going to post it. So. Yeah. And everybody just says, well, I'm just going to post it. Why not? I'm like, oh, God. yeah. Well, yeah, I, I always have my go to people that I ask and is this good enough? And they'll say, no, it, just, it needs this. And then I'll work That's on it and get it. Around, be honest with you. Yeah. So was your was your dad a magician then? Um, He dabbled in magic. He didn't he wasn't like a professional magician or anything like that. So it's not it doesn't run in the family. No, not at all. He just liked card tricks. And he, he, he always had um he had um. Uh, Paul Daniels uh, card trick books around the house, and he used to get Blackstone magic kits and uh -huh. magic kits back in the day when they used to sell them at like just regular grocery stores. Right. And he just loved magic. He was a, he's a fan of magic. He's always loved magic. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So it's cool. one little thing of his that wasn't a big thing for him turned out to be my life. <laughs> right. I mean. Yeah. 
So I want to know, you saw the four robber trick and then mm -hmm. what, tell me, and you were five. Mm -hmm. So from five to when did you decide that that was what you were going to do? Well, it's interesting. When I was a kid, I used to, I used to, um, I didn't like sports or anything like that, but I, I loved skateboarding. So I used to skateboard a lot. And I got really, really good at skateboarding. Um, and I busted up my knees and my body, body hurts now. I never should have done it, but um, I, re I regret that a little bit. <laughs> but I had fun. I had a blast. And um, so there were other things that were definitely pulling me, but not many, not many. It was, it was, from I think it was around you know like I was still doing I I love detectives like stuff too back in the day so I would me and this other kid like fifth grade we would we would <laughs> we would get hired by other kids to find like their missing <laughs> they lost something on the playground or they you know and we you know they'd pay us like money to find it we we had detective kits and we had like fing fingerprint stuff we had awesome very yeah i was really into that kind of thing it was so dorky but um <laughs> and, and and you know yeah like i was really popular with the women um a, a, <laughs> a freaking detective magic geek yeah that's that's gonna get the ladies um and it's so but i didn't care it was really fun it was other than that guy named andy actually i remember i remember andy's last name but he was a dork just like i was and he liked yo-yos and little figurine things and you know so and i always loved uh i always loved imaginary playtime stuff i always loved gi okay. joe i always loved he-man i always loved because i created a world with these things and i you know i always loved legos i always loved uh, uh, uh um what's it called the um the the uh log cabin blocks what are those what are they called oh yeah uh, lincoln logs lincoln logs yeah lincoln logs and then also erector sets nice love that stuff i love sea monkeys like i love exploring when i was a kid i just love that kind of stuff but the music came into my life as well so and i realized i had a voice and i could sing and then i played the inst i played instruments i played trombone i played drums i played violin violin was my first instrument I ever played okay, this this i did not this i did not know i did not know you were a magician nope, a, a nobody, musician nobody nobody not many people do not many people do i've kept that kind of private I've been releasing a lot of my karaoke videos lately, but uh, yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Um, and so, so we, I was, we have a uh, we have a Beyond Fame exclusive here with JM. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I it was just I, you know there were things that were pulling me, but I didn't allow them to become the the main influence. Magic was always the main influence in my life, okay. but I allowed those other things to kind of you know. Um, no, no, I don't want to use the word mature. Um, to sweeten the pot, if you will, or to or to um, to kind of you know to salt and life up a little bit, to spice it up a little bit. So music yeah. that became something that I love to do, and it's and that's my hobby. The singing is my hobby now. That's what I, that's what I do for stress relief. That's what I do for therapy. Um, me too. And, yeah. So music has now become that part for me. Um, but as far as like things kind of pulling away from magic, I, I remember I remember when I was resolute that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And it was watching um, a David Copperfield special. And I had met David before that uh, at one of his shows. And I got to show him a trick and he stopped the line. And, we had, and, and I'm very thankful that I've, I've known uh, I've had a very great life as far as the people I know. Chris Kinner, Homer Lee Walk, David Copperfield, all these people have influenced me and, and, and changed me in ways that I never would have before. And, and Chris Kinner is my oldest, oldest, oldest brother of magic, like a dear, dear brother. Uh, love, love him to death. Um, but I, it was after watching a Copperfield special. It was his, um, it was his, um, uh, the train, the uh, Orient Express. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember and, that. 13 at that time and magic had not really been a i wasn't really doing anything with it at that time i just you know it was 13 right and i saw that and i, I remember just inside just the same i had kind of the same moment when i saw my dad do the card trick but it was another it was like so it was it was like i had the first moment you play video games a little bit not much when a lot of video games a lot of like you know uh, adventure games and things like that you have to go 
to the first thing, right? So you talk, right. to, you know, you have to do this, and then there's there's more steps, right? Yeah. You get to the second step, and now you have more knowledge is given to you. New things are now given to you. Think more levels are open up, or whatever happens on that on that thing. Right. Um, that's that's what it, my life has felt like. I I I I know vividly three big moments in my life where everything changed in my in my life for magic. First one is when I saw magic for the first time with my dad. Second one is when I saw Copperfield, and I became resolute at that time. And then the third one is when I met Chris Karen, Homer Lee Wag, and David Copperfield. And I was driving home wow. in my car going, going, wow, there's another level to this. I didn't know. <laughs> and that's the thing I love about magic because I'm always reaching new levels, another level that I just never saw before. Oh. And to me, it's that's on, the joke. It's ongoing. Yeah, it really is, man. It really is. So when when was your first magic performance? Tell me about uh, that. I think I was like uh, seven, eight years old, and I, I did a I did a show uh, in my garage, and I would hand out uh, I made little tickets with pieces of paper that said magic show on it, and then I went around the neighborhood and I went to everybody's door and I said this is going to be a magic show, and <laughs> nice. uh, I remember so vividly, and um, and then I think there was like twenty five people that showed up, and, uh, <clears throat> and I did my first show. I levitated my stepsister at the time and. Um, I did, did uh, I did, I did, I had a lot of Mac magic shit at that time. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like stratosphere and, um, and, uh, the dots impossible, like with the, 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 the handkerchief and the dots come off oh, the can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. And I did card tricks and, and, uh, boy, what a great experience that was. But you have to understand something. My dad wasn't the only person in my life that that really influenced my the idea of theater or performing or 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 doing that my mom was married to a guy named uh, Chuck Larkin and he was in a band he was in a band hold on one second my son's having a seizure hold on one second I can okay. hear yeah I'd rather edit it. Oh, so there you go. You got to experience um, something I deal with on a on a weekly basis. So. I I will edit that out. So don't. No. Okay. I have nothing to hide from anybody. Okay. No, cool. absolutely not. And that's yeah. one of the things I think um, as I reinvented myself, getting older, um, I became real. Yeah. I became real with my fans. Or I became real with my customers. And I saw that they really appreciated that. Good. I don't pull punches. Yeah. I don't, you know, people can say whatever they want about me, but the one thing I don't do is pull punches. And I'm always honest with people. I don't give a crap if they'd like it or not. I don't care. Life is too short to be fake. I can't be fake anymore. Yeah. You can't. You can't. And, and, and if I ever feel myself going towards that direction, I, 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 whoa, I just beat. <laughs> <the crap laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. There you go. You look at what I do for a living. I, I, I'm, in, I'm in an industry that lies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be real. I mean, we're lying to our audience. I mean, now, now those of us who do this in a, in a way that is at least righteous is the fact that I'm, I'm lying, but I'm using the lie to speak a universal truth. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'm I get not, it. 
to hurt somebody. I'm not lying to 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 get over on somebody. Right. But to speak a lie in order to speak the truth. That's I think that's what true magicians can, can really do if they if they apply themselves. Yeah. Um, and so you know, people know about my son. They know about his seizures. They know about everything he's going through. And um, and that's really endeared me to my fans as well. So I think um, it's yeah, been a really, been a really interesting ride. Well, good for you. Uh, we were talking about your first show. Mm -hmm. You sold your tickets. You levitated your sister. Yeah, and, then, yep. and then that you yeah. were. So, yeah, my dad wasn't the only influence. It, my mom was married to a guy named Chuck Larkin. And Chuck it was in a band called the Capital City Boys. And they were a very, very popular country band. And um, and I got to meet Crystal Gale. I got to go on stage with Crystal Gale at, at the, oh, the fairgrounds. So I could perform with her when I was a kid. I mean, I got so many levels of influence of 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 show business from all angles of my of my life, um, and and it really just kind of melted into the to the person you see before you today. Very cool. Let's talk about uh, you put out a lot of magic, and yeah. uh, you're a very creative guy. I want to talk about the creative process from you. What inspires your creativity? anything man there's no i you know I've, I've been asked this question thousands of times in interviews and things and um there's no right answer there's no correct process there's no if i could bottle it up and give it to you i would it, it, it could be a song it could be a, a thought i have in my head it could be whatever i'm going through in life at that time and i kind of try to create a trick around that uh freedom pack for example where the cards are loose and then they go back box and everything i was going through my divorce at that time and that's why i i, I named the ring thing uh not ring thing but the ring trick i did uh, divorce because i was going through my divorce yeah. at that time. freedom pack was part of the divorce process too and it was okay. a free I, that was the very first trick i came up with after my divorce I'm going through all that pain and misery and everything and, and almost losing my life honestly um Free, freedom pack was was a fresh new start for me and that's why i named it freedom pack it was it was a nice. freedom moment for me um like so that. it could be anything man it could be it could be it could be just laying here and thinking about something that not even just, magic. Comes, just comes to you yeah i could be out in a bar or a restaurant or whatever and hear a song or hear a lyric or i hear a conversation of some people and talking and i'm like like oh, i'm working on a new idea right now it's it's a cigarette through hand so you take a cigarette, you pass it through your hand, you light it while it's in between. Oh, nice. Pop, then they slowly pull it out and everything's free and clean. You hand everything out. The reason awesome. I came up with that idea is because I overheard somebody talking about they got burnt uh, on their hand by a cigarette a couple of days before. <laughs> something. I'm like, wow, that'd be interesting. What if the what if the idea of being burnt by a cigarette wasn't a bad idea anymore? What if you could what if you could show somebody like it's not the worst thing to happen to you. And then this whole right. idea of being in your hand and everything. Just, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, let's talk about. Yeah, so this. short answer, life. Life, anything in life. There you go. I like it. Um, get out and live it and be inspired by it, right? Absolutely. And be the change you want to, you want to see, man. Nice. I want to I want to ask you because you do have a lot of product out. Let's go from and I know magic is the industry is very I mean it's a hard industry to put stuff out at because people are are always saying you stole my idea, you stole my uh move. Um when you come up with an idea they, that you your what's shit. that? They actually do steal your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you come up with something, what Take me through the process of an idea to a routine to marketing it. Mm -hmm. Well, the idea and the routining and all that come years before most of the time. Uh, yeah. When I was younger, it would there was there was a longer period between working something out to putting it on the market. Now that I'm older and I have more experience behind me, I'm very good at just looking at something and knowing if it's going to work or not. I just okay. know now. Uh, but that but that's come with a long history of. <laughs> trial and error to get to that place right. you know what i mean yeah but i have a natural sense to just go oh that's perfect done game over it's great perfect um uh, because you don't want to over extend a thought on something too long right because you'll never get you'll never get 
it out. You'll never, you'll never get it done. So yeah. it has to end at some point. And usually when it ends, I usually have more ideas about that thing right after. <laughs> and like, yeah, that's, that's so me so every time. <laughs> Isn't it? Right. Exactly. Um, uh, so, uh, so the thought comes, uh, so here's the idea, boom, here. So uh, we'll go with Freedom Pack, okay? So uh, Freedom Pack was was on uh, accident. I was not creating a cards to box trick. I wasn't. I literally was just messing around with a box one day and I was tearing it. I was just tearing it. I'm like, we could have, I don't know, tear it this way. And I like to play like that because you discover things. Right. So I just took a box and I started tearing it. Uh, Get load stuff in there. Okay. Yeah, that's it's okay. Yeah, so whatever. Went away, went to bed, woke up the next day, and I had and I had randomly put the cards in the box and went, eh. Okay. When I woke up, I looked in the mirror before I picked them up, and it looked like it just a lone deck of cards sitting on the table with no box around it. And I'm like, oh, yeah. oh that's interesting. All right. Okay. Uh, what if I, oh, 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 oh. I, I literally remember doing that. I was like, oh, 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 this is so good if this works. And I did the flip and I'm like, I'm done. I'm out. I got to call Paul Harris right now. So I called Paul Harris. I showed him the video. He goes, holy shit. That's amazing. That's he awesome. sent me the contract for it uh, within 10 minutes. And wow. that was it, Freedom Pack. Um, but I had gone through a really hard time with my divorce. So for nine months, I was just in a, a just a mess. I didn't do magic. I didn't pick up anything. I was I was suicidal. I lost my kids. I lost my family. I lost my faith. Uh, so all these things were just coming in. I like just a. <laughs> um, I didn't have a car. I didn't have. I didn't have anything. I had nothing. I had nothing. I didn't have a computer. I had nothing. I had to start over. I had to start over completely from scratch. Um, and so that's the first trick I put out after my divorce. So there was a, there was a, so during that nine months. Can, you know, can I, can I ask, can I ask you something here real quick? So what, so what was it that made you get off your ass and say, I got to get back out again? And what was, what was the point of that point of moving forward? I was sick and tired of crying every day. I was okay. sick and tired of feeling defeated. I was sick and tired of continually making myself a victim in this and not allowing myself to heal. And I just, I, I said, you know, something's got to change. If nothing changes, I'm going to die. That's just the bottom line. I know it's going to happen. And I, I said to myself, maybe there's another step. Maybe there's another journey that I, that, that, that I'm, I'm supposed to go down. And I got off my ass and I, I just picked up a deck of cards one day and I just started messing with them again. Then I did, I quit for two months. I didn't do shit. Didn't do anything. Wow. And I started messing with them and, and then I started to feel the joy again coming back. And I just started, I, did, awesome. I was just doing magic myself just like this in the mirror and things. I wouldn't even, I wasn't even going out showing people anything. I just, I just wanted to find it again for me, you know, and I'm about to cry right now because it, it was, it was a really, uh, really, really emotional time finding magic again for my life and being able to find that magic. So whenever I hear people tell me, you're the reason I got into magic, you're the reason I do this, you're the reason I do this. I understand so fully now where they're coming from because I got to find it again for myself. Yeah. And that was an amazing experience. It was That's like seeing that card trick for the first time. I'm give I'm giving you a Skype hug, bro. Oh. <laughs> Bring it in. Fist bump. Right yeah. on. Um, what advice would you give to either young people or maybe somebody who has had a hard time like that and wants to bounce back from it? What advice would you give them to discover their talent or passion and what what would they do with you gotta, it? You gotta listen to the voices, man. You gotta listen to the voice inside you more. You have to trust your voice more. You have to trust it. Don't second guess yourself. Um, don't live with regrets and, and stop blaming other people for your failures. 
Failure is a beautiful thing. It needs to be done to be successful. You cannot be fully successful without failure. It's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. Embrace failure. Embrace the mistakes. Embrace that journey because it makes you better. Learn from them. Become a better person because of it. But don't allow that to become your your reality. Don't allow that to become your excuse that you make of why you're not making it or why you're not doing the things that you want to do. Life is too damn short. You have no excuse and you have nobody else to blame but yourself. And once you take responsibility for your life, you actually start to find a freedom in that. And you can now look at your life differently and you can say to yourself, you know, yeah, I did do those things or yeah, that's who I was, but I'm not that person anymore. And because of that, I'm a better person now. Just nice. take responsibility for your own lives and stop blaming other people. I like it. What are some ways that people can discover their talents or passions? Um, try things. Get out and do it. Last night, I went to a karaoke place because I wanted to sing karaoke, but they had a contest and I didn't want to enter. I didn't know anything about the contest. I was just outside smoking a cigarette, talking to one of my dudes. And the guy who runs the thing comes out and just randomly looks at me and goes, hey, last thing. Do you want to get in? I'm like, yeah, cool. <laughs> I've learned in my older age to, to every time you have an opportunity in front of you, take it. Nice. Take the opportunity. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? It doesn't make sense to say no to something. Right. Why would you do that? Why yeah. would you take yourself out of that moment? Why would you? And yeah, your heart might race or whatever. Who cares? Go. Right. Let's I'm do it. Strong believer and advocate. But if something comes to your door, comes to your personal doorstep, you have everything in your power right now at that very time to accomplish that thing. Perfect. Even if you've never done it before. I have never been on TV before I was on Wizard Wars. We got seen by 2.2 million people. Our episode was the highest rated show nice. of those two years. Wow. Me and Adam have never done anything like that before. But we're like, yep, let's go. <laughs> when Illusionist called me up years and years, when I first got started, I'm like, hey, let's do a thing. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I didn't know what I was doing. I never, I'd never, I didn't know anything about how that worked. <laughs> I know how it works, and now I started my own company because of that. Awesome. Now, if I had those opportunities, I wouldn't have seen how editing works. I wouldn't see how the filmmaking works or how things are, are, are put together. I wouldn't have seen that. I wouldn't have seen how Hollywood works and how L.A. treats people and what they do if I wouldn't have gone on Wizard Wars. I wouldn't have experienced that. Nice. I wouldn't have the America's Got Talent thing when I helped Smooth Any. Uh, we got into second place. I never, But I said yes to something. I said sure. yes to something never done and always say yes to things that make you scared always those are the best ones i like that that's awesome yeah Yeah. those are the best ones one of my favorite songs we sang it last night is live like you're dying by tim mcgraw because damn not man why not yeah you wait you're gonna live forever you're not no so why not do everything in your power to be to be to be the best you can to experience every little thing in life that has to offer and go for it, man. Just go for it. Stop making excuses. I'm so sick of people making excuses. I used to do yeah. that when I was. I I I I don't I don't tolerate it anymore. How? <laughs> yeah. What? Yep. I agree. Uh, two questions. So, uh, what is your favorite karaoke song? And did you win the competition last night? I don't have a, a I don't have a lot of favorites in life of things. I've never been a favorite kind of person. I like a lot of things. Um, okay. So. Yeah, I sing anything from country to rock to rap to love songs to so from Poison, Every Rose Has a Thorn to Tim McGraw to David Lee Roth, Just a Gigolo. I think Just a Gigolo is one of my absolute like gonna go to uh, that and Every Rose Has a Thorn is my go to. <laughs> nice. I like, I, like, I, like, I don't know the other one. I know Every Rose Has a Thorn. That's a great tune. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, let's see. Um, Rick? Wow, it's been 45 minutes already. <laughs> uh, we're having a blast here. Let's do this. Um, let's get into some wrap up and um, maybe we could do a part two revised because I think you give great advice and uh, it's been a fast moving conversation. This has been awesome. Let's talk about magic with a vision. Mm-hmm. And I want to know what that's all about and what your idea behind that is. So, 
Uh, Magic with Vision is, a, is a, the idea and the concept of my website and so my Instagram came up and came to me when I was doing mentalism. There was a there was a whole year that and this is another thing. I was at, I was performing at the Magic Castle, and I closed with a mentalism piece uh, that was called Serendipity, uh, chiller mentalism piece. And and a lady comes up to me afterwards and, and, and whispered in my ear, I know, I, I know what you do is real. My sister does it. You're absolutely amazing. And she was crying. She was actually crying. And I'm like, I was like, wow, that's that's strong shit. I never got that with magic. I never got that with magic. I've gotten strong reactions, but not crying. Right. And I'm like, oh, mentalism. This is interesting. So. Andy Kaufman has always been a, a huge inspiration in my life and uh, and just uh, a, an amazing man we had here on this earth. And he just he wouldn't let he wouldn't let people off the hook. He just kept doing it. And, and people didn't know if it was real or not. And I love that. And I said to myself, I wonder if I could quit magic, convince all of the magic community that I'm done, convince the mentalism community that I'm now a mentalist put together a full one hour show, one man show, take that show and present it either at Murphy's lecture or a penguin show. Okay. Do a lecture, a three hour lecture on the material and, and then just treat mentalism for a whole year. And every time everybody would ask me, are you going back to magic? I would say, no, absolutely not. I wonder if I could convince them. And I did. Nice. Very I did. Cool. And I gave myself one year, the day it was October 5th. Um, in 2015 to October 5th of 2016. One year from when I was at the castle to then. And that's exactly what I did. I created a one-man show. I can, And that was really hard because I, I kept having magic ideas come to me. Uh -huh. I put them the pipeline. So I just had to like videotape them very quickly. And then, okay, go away, go away, go away. Mentalism, mentalism, mentalism. And through that, I forged a very good brother. Uh, uh, a hood relationship with Mark Salem. And we, we became very dear brothers through that. And he started promoting me in the mentalism community. Nice. And, and it just happened. It just freaking happened. And and I said to myself after that year, I'm 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 done with mentalism. I'm going right back to magic. But I'm not telling you. <laughs> so we well, my penguin lecture, if you watch my penguin show, which was a, a sold out show, all mentalism, one man show. I'd never done anything like that before. And I just wanted to see if I could do it. Wow, and I, that's awesome. Very inspired by uh, people like Darren Brown and Michael Weber and those kind of people. Yeah, um, me too. And you'll notice I changed my look at the time. I, I, I shaved my head. I had glasses on. I don't need glasses. I have glasses <laughs> on. Um, and the reason for the glasses for the character that I, was, that I was creating for this show is I was at a bar one night and I put the glasses on. I just Again, I just was messing around, seeing what would, would happen. And this guy literally walks up to me. He goes, man, can I ask you a question? I'm like, yeah. Well, I go, first of all, why are you asking me? He goes, well, you got glasses on. You look really smart. I'm like, That's it. I got to have the glasses. Awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah, uh, th those things just kind of came out of you know, nowhere. And um, so magic with vision is kind of an, a, mod to, a, a, a nod to the mentalism kind of phase I had. Um, because magic should have vision. And, and mentalism is, a, is always in the head. So when you when you put it into the form of, of physical, visual things, like Brown did perfectly, uh, you get magic with vision. So right. I think, so. It, and, and, and also, it's also a path. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's never ending. And, yeah. and so when I create magic, I create it with a vision in mind. Okay. And so my creations, when you go to my website, when you buy my projects, when you do those things, you will know that all my stuff <laughs> is is deeply rooted that i have a vision for each piece that i create or the, or the project that i do that's awesome very cool um i'm gonna ask you a random question and then we'll do some wrap up so random questions uh i like time travel and mm -hmm. so i'm gonna go with that if you can travel back in time and perform a magic or a mentalism effect for anybody uh historical who would it be and what would you perform and why? Mm. Mm. Myself. Okay. Yeah. 
I do magic. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I would do. But I want to go back at this age to like a nine or ten year old me and and bump into him somewhere or whatever. You know where it probably happened? I would go back to Dollywood when I was went to Dollywood when I was younger. And I remember getting the, the mystic smoke and the, it it blew up. It's so hot in Dollywood, it blew up in the bag. It was so so messy, so messy. <laughs> That was such a horrible product, but it was still cool. Like, ah, yeah, it was so cool. cool. I got that. <laughs> I, I I got it at a magic shop there, and I got a couple other little magic things. I would I would I would get a job at that magic shop the day before, whatever, or maybe in a year before, whatever. And I yeah. would wait it out. I'd wait it out until that day that I was there, and I'd perform magic for me. And what? I would love to. I would love to see my reaction. With I, my, I was just gonna. I was just gonna ask you. What do you think your reaction would be? Oh man, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'd probably start crying. I'm uh, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I'm, I'm I cry a lot. I, I, I like things make me cry. Like when I've whenever I'm I'm very, very sensitive. I'm a very sensitive person. I think you have to be you have yeah. to when when you when you reach a certain level of uh of wherever you're at in your career or your art or whatever. Sure. You have to be sensitive, you have to be open to those things. I'm, I'm very much an empath too. I can feel other people's emotions and stuff. Nice. Um, and it's not a spiritual thing. It's just something. I, yeah. Something, you know. it's, it's, a a curse. Human, it's a human thing. Yeah. It's a curse and a blessing. Sure. Uh, when I was younger, I used to get headaches when I just go into places and I didn't understand why I was getting headaches, like with all these people around me, but then I got older and I realized what was going on. Wow. Um, wow. That's cool. But yeah. So whenever I see people to see so whenever I like watch America's Got Talent and I see people succeed or follow their dreams, I cry like a baby. Like a baby. That's awesome. Because I, I just love that. I love seeing people succeed. Yeah. I think it's so beautiful when people follow their dreams. It, it just yeah. inspires me. It inspires me. That's very cool. Awesome. Uh, what's in the future for uh, JM? What are you working on? What's going on? Well, I can let you know because this will be out when? When will this go out? uh wednesday is or tuesday, tuesday night wednesday morning i just got done signing uh, the contracts i got five projects coming out with illusionist sweet so i'm back with illusionist and uh it's it's going to be a real big comeback one's uh, one's a whole sleeving project it's all sleeving wow. something i've wanted to do for many many years and finally we're getting the chance to do it and then um four other downloads and then uh so four separate tricks and then another one called the serpent system and that's going to be another separate uh project by itself um uh, cool. we'll leave for vegas next month to film everything and yeah. uh me and adam wilber are going to be filming some stuff together too so um very cool man it's a very cool process of being able to reconnect me and adam wilber and illusionist fell out for a little bit and over at magi fest this year me and Adam saw each other and we hugged him because I mean, dude, he was my oh, brother. That's great. He's my brother, you know. I mean, we 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 went on Wizard Wars together. We went through so much, yeah, so much shit with that show. Oh my god, we almost. <laughs> was, oh yeah, there's old. That, that could be a second uh, podcast by itself. Um, <laughs> uh, it was really cool to to mend fences and to see each other again and connect. And he goes, "Man, let's get you back to Illusionist." I'm like, "Dude, that would be amazing. Let's do it." And uh, we. we Oh, it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm super excited. I'm super excited about it. I got I got to tell you. I got I asked Adam Miller to be on the show and he said yes. So I'm going to schedule a time with him and get him on. Good. I was going to give you uh that's who the name I was going to give you actually. I, well, I brought that up cuz you mentioned that and I'm like I know your buddies with him and I should have gave you a heads up and say no, he can't do Adam Wilbur because uh I already got him. So Okay, so then that's my next question. I do referrals. So who would you refer that's awesome, that is inspired by passion, has a great talent? It doesn't have to be a magician. It can be a musician, anybody that's awesome that you know who you can get me in touch with and be on the show. Um, there's so many good people out there. Yeah. There's a lot um, of people there, too. Um, Gregory Wilson. Okay. I love yeah. Greg. Greg's, uh, he's, he's one, another, just another dear brother of mine. And we've and just love him to death, man. Um, he's so brilliant. He's so brilliant. 
He's just a oh. genius. He's just a genius, man. His and his wit and just wow. how he just responds and reacts to people and situations. I got to I got to see him at uh, Magic Jam in Salt Lake City. I got to spend a couple of days with him, and blew my mind. I, I, just an outstanding man, and he's just super cool. So that will be super awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely, I'll get you in touch with him for sure. Okay, sounds good. Uh, yeah. Any any final thoughts, my man? Not really. No, I think we talked a lot about a lot actually. Yeah, that was a great interview. Well, thank you. It was a great interview as well. Thank you very much, man. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking your time and being on Beyond Fame. Anytime. I would love to be back anytime you'd like. Okay. Thanks, bud. Thanks, brother. And I'm going to...